So we're continuing to look at the topology of the real number line. So we recently looked at the notion of an epsilon neighborhood, an open set, and a limit point. And in this video, we wanna look at the notion of an isolated point. But before we do that, I wanna recall the definition of a limit point. So we say that A, which is a real number, is a limit point of a subset of real numbers, capital A, if for all epsilon bigger than zero, V epsilon A intersect A, in other words, the epsilon neighborhood of little a intersected with the set capital A contains a point other than A. And then our definition for an isolated point is really not super satisfying, but we'll fix that. It says that an isolated point A, which is an element of A, is a non-limit point. And I should point out here that this is a non-limit point of the set A. So the way you want to think about limit points of sets is that they are points which cannot create an achievable distance between that point and maybe other points from the set. So you can't get away from the rest of the set. But isolated points have the ability to get away from the rest of the set, if you will. Okay, so now this definition down here is really built off of the negation of this, this definition. So what I want to do is carefully negate this definition so we have what I'd like to call a testing definition for isolated points. Now before we do this, I want to recall the way to negate a statement. So our quantifiers will change. So for alls turn into there exists there exists turn into for alls and then the conclusion will negate so that's exactly what we want to do for this statement so let's go ahead and do that we say a in a is an isolated point if there exists epsilon bigger than zero so notice i've changed my for all to there exists such that now let's look at this. V epsilon intersect A contains a point other than A. So the important thing here is to negate this statement. V epsilon A intersect A contains a point other than A. So the neg negation would be does not contain any points other than A. But not containing any points other than A is the same as being the singleton A. So in other words, we can rewrite this as V epsilon A intersect capital A equals just the singleton A. Okay, good. Now what we wanna do is maybe look at some um, examples of this, starting with a graphical example. So I'll look at this set, which is built out of a half open interval. So here we've got it's closed on the left, open on the right, and then this singleton point right here, little a. And notice this most definitely will be called an isolated point because if we take an epsilon neighborhood of about that length right there, notice if we intersect this epsilon neighborhood with the entire set, we only get A itself. Now this is really good news because these careful definitions that we write down should work alongside our intuition. And if I were to like ask someone on the street what point in this set is isolated, I would say that most people would say that this little point over here by itself should be described as isolated. And that's exactly what these definitions do. Okay, so now I wanna maybe look at some other examples in order to get a feel for what's going on here. So let's maybe say that the set A is equal to one, one half, one third, one fourth, dot, 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 so it's all of the reciprocal of natural numbers. So earlier, and I should say earlier by the last video, we found that zero is a limit point of this set A. And that was actually pretty easy to show. I'll let you guys look at the last video in order to see how we did that. But my claim here is that for all natural numbers n, 1 over n is an isolated point of A. So let's maybe think about how to do that. We need to create some epsilon where if we look at an epsilon neighborhood, it does not overlap into the next reciprocal of a natural number. So let's maybe sketch this out real quick. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and put the number zero over here, the number one over here, and then this is not to scale, but what I'll put right here is one over n, so bigger than that will be one over n minus one, and smaller than that will be one over n plus one. So the goal will be to fit an epsilon neighborhood that does not hit one over n plus one or one over n minus one. So that gives us a major hint here. Here we could take epsilon to be equal to one half the minimum distance between one over n and one over n plus one and one over n and one over n minus one. But we know that this distance will be less than this distance given that one over n plus one is, the numbers get closer as we move in this direction, you know, for what it's worth. So we'll take this to be one half one over n minus one over n plus one. Great. But now that is going to be equal to one half. And now we can like find common denominators here and notice that this is one over n times n plus one. So if we take epsilon equal to this, what we wanna notice is that V epsilon one over N intersected with A will only contain the point one over N. And that's because there are no other reciprocal of natural numbers between this point right here, which is on the left of that epsilon neighborhood, and this point right here on the right of this epsilon neighborhood. Because by construction, we made this epsilon so that it landed right between these two reciprocals of natural numbers. Okay, great. So now maybe that's a good place to stop this video. We'll come back and look at the notion of a closed set.